Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, yeah, so some of you I might have met over the years, um, and many of you I don't recognise your names. So um, I hope this is going to be of um, some use to you. So my name is Emily. I've been at the Royal Free Hospital since 2009. I've been a renal dietitian since about 2012. And I'm going to take you on a bit of a whistle stop tour of what we do um, as the dietitians and how you can get to see us if you want to. So um, I'm going to cover the people that we see, um, the dietetic aspects of care. So about potassium, phosphate, salt, fluid, nutrition, and when and how to see a dietitian. So just a little bit of an overview. So there's um, 5.4 whole time equivalents of dietitians at the Royal Free. So um, we are spread across all the services. Um, so we cover over 12, 000, uh, sorry, 1,200 low clearance patients um, across the units. We also cover obviously the 10 South and 10 East in the Royal, Royal Free Hospital. We've got around 714 um, hemodialysis patients. So that's from Edgware, Mary Rankin, Tottenham and Barnet. And also we've got about 159 peritoneal dialysis patients in total as well across Tottenham, Mary Rankin and Edgware. So generally we see patients for potassium, phosphate, bone management, salt and fluid and nut nutrition support mainly. I'm gonna start with potassium. Um, so I'm not going to go into masses amounts of detail in everything because otherwise we'd be here all day. So that's something that we could do on a one to one basis if if you wanted to. So um, what is potassium? So potassium is a mineral which is necessary for the normal functioning of cells, nerves and muscles. And what happens if it goes too high? Well, um, so it can um, make the heart beat abnormally. And I mean, can um, even have cardiac arrest if it's very, very high. So it's not just diet that causes high potassiums. There are some medications that also cause a high potassium. So I like to um, check those out as well when I'm seeing my patients. Um, one of them is something called Ramipril, which is a blood pressure medication. Now, the doctors like to keep you on Ramipril um, for as long as possible pre-dialysis these days because we know it does protect the kidneys. So um, they try and keep you on that as long as possible and then try and reduce potassium in the diet to keep you on that. The other one is perhaps um, something called spironolactone, which is a water tablet. Um, constipation can cause a high potassium too. So um, making sure that our bowels are opening regularly is really helpful. If people have an internal bleed, that can make it high. Or actually, if the um, test sample takes too long to get to the laboratory, um, it's called a hemolyzed sample and it will look, make it look like it's artificially high. Pre-dialysis, people tend to um, have low bicarbonate levels, so they might be started on um, bicarbonate tablets. And what that does, it helps to balance out the potassium levels. Uncontrolled blood sugars also um, raise potassium diet, as I mentioned. And then for people on dialysis, maybe if missing sessions, shorter sessions, or the dialysis tank that people are being dialyzed against, they might be, it might be too high for them. So the aims that we have with potassium restrictions, so we really try to encourage a diverse and healthy diet um, and we are aiming for our five a day fruit and vegetable at least. And so um, if people do need to restrict potassium, then we are just trying to get people to meet those um, five a day, but with lower potassium options. Um, and for example, avoiding fruit juice is a very easy cut because basically in a glass of fruit you're probably eating about three or four pieces of that fruit so um, that's something I would pick on. Um, the Mediterranean style di diet is proven to be beneficial for the reduction in cardiovascular disease. Um, I'm, I don't know if everybody has heard of the Mediterranean style diet but Essentially what it is, it's um, quite rich in fruit and vegetables, whole grains, um, having lean proteins from fish and poultry, using good fats such as olive oil and having a bit of dairy and then just very few sort of sweets and red meats as well. 
So we only resp rest restrict potassium if required. So we're we're aiming for a potassium of less than 5.5 for people who are pre-dialysis um, and less than six for people who are on dialysis. So we are not the banana police, as I said in my blurb. Um, we will only restrict potassium if you really need to um, for your actual results. Um, so potassium restriction, um, so cooking methods are one of the easiest ways to manage eating plenty of vegetables in the diet. So boiling gets rid of potassium, boil your potatoes, vegetables where you can, throw the water away and um, there you go. You've got a much safer way to eat what you want to eat, but with less potassium. So what we try to do is work with people's current diets to try and minimize the amount of changes that people need to make. So studies have shown that people are much more likely to stick to it. So what we don't do is give people a, um, a diet plan and say, here, eat this, because what we know is that that doesn't work. And and, you know, if you go on a diet, you generally you come off a diet. So we, we try to manage it by making small, manageable changes and you can build on that over the longer term. So we try to use as well behavior change techniques and that allows people to come up with their own solutions in within a supportive discussion. Um, because actually if we dictate to you, oh do this, do that, well, some people will will be okay with that, but a lot of people it doesn't really help to make changes because you don't really want to do it for yourself. So I've included a couple of slides on what things are high in potassium. So um, there's just the um, visual um, high potassium slides and um, you can ha have a copy of this if anyone, want, anyone wants to. Um, so generally we pick on the fruit juices, this thing, the low salt, which is actually made of potassium chloride. So it's worth avoiding that sort of. Um, peanut butter is another high one. Lower potassium foods tend to be bread, rice, pasta, um, those sorts of things. Um, I'm going to touch on protein just a little bit. So on dialysis, protein requirements are a bit higher. So the dialysis machine actually takes protein out of the body. So um, we say to stick to around 1.2 grams per kilogram per day. So obviously no one's going to go around measuring the exact amount of protein just to know that including good sources of protein and plenty of protein when you're on dialysis is good for you. Now it's a different message pre-dialysis. Pre-dialysis we know that lots of protein tends not to be so good for the kidneys. So in low clearance we kind of we try and tr try and keep it down a bit. So 0.8 grams per kilograms. Practically, how I would approach that is just to say to aim to have animal protein no more than once in a day. Um, and for your, our younger people who are trying to build muscle and stuff, I get them to not have protein shakes and creatine drinks to help build their muscle because actually it, it's doing them no good at all. Um, so a bit about phosphate. Moving on to phosphates, so phosphate is a mineral used for the production of energy, muscle and nerve function and bone growth. So most of the phosphate is actually in our bones. Our bones are made of calcium phosphate. Phosphate is also used as a building block for several important sub substances, including those used by the cell for energy, cell membranes and to make DNA in the body. In um, chronic kidney disease, um, phosphate isn't cleared very well, and so it leads to an increased risk for heart attack, strokes, and morbidity, and, and something called calciphylaxis because it actually um, binds with calcium in the in the um, body and can deposit there. But the main thing that drives people crazy is being itchy from having a high phosphate level. So. Phosphate, we're trying to keep phosphate levels below 1.5 millimoles per litre, which is normal for everybody. Um, so um, the causes of high phosphate can be dietary intake. It can even be people with very low kidney function that need to start dialysis. So sometimes I'll get people referred to me who have a high phosphate, but actually, even if they starve, they're not going to get that phosphate in control because what they need is dialysis at that point. 
Um, and dialysis, as I say, isn't the most tremendously effective way at removing all the phosphate as well, so it can build up. So to treat a high phosphate, um, we um, it's recommended diet first. So what we don't want to do is keep piling in lots of new tablets um, before we've even tried to support people to change the diet. And the dietitians in the hemodialysis units, we, we actually take a lead on helping people to choose the right phosphate binders for them um, and, um, and, and can manage it with the, with the GP. Some of the GPs are not prescribing the binders these days, so they have to come from the unit. So it's a bit of a pain, but um, that's how it is at the moment. Sometimes we might need to prioritize things which are not phosphate. So for example, if someone's got a high potassium and a high phosphate, I would, I would prioritize the potassium because it's, you know, more acutely could possibly be dangerous. Or if they're very malnourished, then actually I want them to get them eating um, because that's more of a threat shorter term. If phosphate in the diet, the classics, eggs, cheese, milk, fish with bones, high, you know, oily fish, nuts, and offal. Um, where we're getting most of our phosphate from these days though is in phosphate ad additives. So um, manufacturers are piling it in where they can, when they can it seems like, um, and it's very easily absorbed. So um, they use it as a, a preservative in a bulking agent. Um, so things like Coca-Cola, the phosphate in Coca-Cola goes straight into your bloodstream. So even a phosphate binder can't help, help to control that. So um, um, trying to have as less processed foods as possible um, is really helpful to control phosphate as well. But obviously, I know that's not possible for everybody, but, you know, ideally. OK, moving on to salt and fluid. So for us, fluid overloading is actually one of the biggest avoidable causes of admissions. Um, now, recognizing when you're fluid overloaded, the, the, the most obvious, obvious one is when the legs appear puffy. If people are lying down and not very active, actually the fluid can pool in the bottom of the spine, so in the sacrum, so it might not be on the legs, in fact. If people are not reaching their dry weight, if they're on dialysis consistently, or the blood pressure is high at the end of dialysis, or there's very large fluid gains of more than three kilograms. Um, um, the other thing I look out is for is something called um, pro-BMP, which is um, a marker in the blood, which we also might look at. Um, and then finally, we have our bioimpedance machine, which is the machine you stand on on the unit, which um, measures you know, how much fat, muscle, and water there is in our bodies. Um, so the only one really here you can use in isolation is puffy legs. If someone's got puffy legs and you press it and it stays indented, then you're definitely fluid overloaded. But um, sometimes that's not, not actually all that evident. So we might need to you know, do a bit of investigation and weigh up all of these things to actually decide whether somebody's fluid overloaded or not. Um, and the thing with fluid overloading is that it can mask weight loss and malnutrition. So people are losing weight, but actually on the scales, they're the same weight. So they're gaining fluid and losing real weight. Um, so salt in general, we do say about reducing salt to help kidneys. That's the one sort of blanket advice there is for everybody, but as well for um, managing um, fluid um, fluid intake, we know that by cutting the amount of salt in the diet, people naturally drink less. So telling someone to drink less isn't as effective as getting someone to cut down on salt because we are less thirsty, basically. Now, in the UK, we're, we're generally eating around eight grams of salt a day, and we are aiming for around about five grams a day, five to six grams a day, which is about a teaspoon Bearing in mind, um, around 61% of our salt comes from processed foods. And in the UK, um, bread and processed meats contribute the most to our diets, salt to our diets. So simple ways, reduce the salt in the cooking and take it off the table. Um, and be aware some, some cooking styles like Indian, Chinese, Caribbean can be quite high in salt and maybe stock cubes and things. 
Um, so the rule of thumb there lit literally is just the less processed, the better. So we measured that. We had salt questionnaires and also diet recall. Tips on managing fluid on dialysis. So um, one, one tip might be measuring out the amount of fluid you have to begin with in the day. And then every time you have a drink, pour that bit out and then you'll know how much you have left for the day. Using small cups, spreading through the day, taking small sips. This time of year, great tip to freeze drinks in plastic bottles because it as it and just sip it as it defrosts. It doesn't have to be a plastic bottle. Um, sucking on ice cubes as well is quite helpful and lasts longer than water. So the other thing that we look out for is um, patients who are actually struggling to eat and are actually quite malnourished. So protein energy wasting, which is another word for malnutrition, um, affects about 20 to 40 percent of people with um, stage four and five um, chronic kidney disease. So we would look out for if people are consistently coming off of their dialysis under their dry weight or, you know, people just losing weight generally complaining of loss of appetite. If you you know, family members might see things before, you, you know, the person with the kidney problems does. Um, so they can be really useful in flagging things to us. We can also look out for hand grip strength as well. Hand grip gives us a measure of how people are with their muscle rather than seeing how much they weigh on the scales because obviously with kidney problems, it can be quite misleading. And then obviously judge, um, assessing what people are actually eating. So how we treat that, you probably, um, people might already know, it's the classic eat little and often, high energy foods. Um, and if that's not working, then we have um, the supplement drinks and nutrition drinks that we can turn to as well. So how do we delay renal replacement therapy if you're pre-dialysis? Okay, so... Um, generally speaking to treat the core the, the thing that actually caused the kidney damage if at all possible sometimes it's not possible for example if you've got polycystic kidneys um, but in in the uk diabetes is the main cause of renal disease so actually getting the diabetes under control is um, the, probably the best thing that can be done if you have diabetes that's caused the kidney problems and also high blood pressure classic um, so reducing salt and obviously the medical team need to um, get that under control as well with medication and uh, losing weight if required you know and if that's not possible some people really struggle with that um, maybe because um, really limited in food choices or can't exercise then just focus on being a little bit healthier and anything you know all adds up in the long run the other thing to note maybe a little bit depressingly, is that we all lose kidney function with age. So over the age of 40, we um, generally use, lose about 1% of kidney function every year anyway. So um, diabetes and the kidney diet. So really these two shouldn't be conflicting and shouldn't be separate. Um, essentially, we're trying to eat a balanced diet still. Um, so choosing whole grain starchy carbohydrates for the carbohydrate section here, which is, um, you know, your breads and pastas, um, rice um, in the top top section there. For the, for the um, fruits and vegetables, we can aim for lower potassium fruits and vegetables and use, you know, boiling cooking methods where possible to reduce the potassium of those. Um, so you can still keep the appropriate amount of fruit and vegetables in your diet and eating the right amount of protein for your kidney stage. So um, as I said earlier, pre-dialysis, not having, you know, not having lots of protein. And then if you're on dialysis, then, you know, you can have more of that section. And then obviously there's always the little bit for um, foods that are high in fats and sugars just down at the bottom there. So we're still aiming for a balanced diet. Um, and with diabetes, really, the medication needs to be optimised where possible rather than people just cutting out all carbohydrates and trying to manage it that way because that's you know that's not a really enjoyable way to live or enjoy your food as well um, and the body does need carbohydrates for for our brains to work properly 
So getting to speak to a dietitian. So um, we serve all of our um, renal patients. So if you do want to speak to a dietitian, um, then speak to your um, physician, your nurse or your doctor, and they can speak to us or email us. Um, they all know how to get in contact with us. If you're on dialysis, hemodialysis, we review the bloods every three months with the consultant. Otherwise, we rely on the nurses and the doctors referring to us. And in, in low clearance, we rely purely on referrals. So please do speak to the nurse and say, please um, email the dietitians to get us an appointment and we can get you booked in um, as soon as possible. OK, so. Um, was our whistle step tour, stop tour. I hope um, I hope that was of some interest. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and go back to David. Um, does anybody have any questions at all? Okay. okay. Um, the uh, page where you were mainly talking about salt. Um, yeah. I know that basically you're showing things in general and you're not being yeah. needing to be specific but one of the most important things that I found mm. in my journey was that salt was easily replaced by spices and herbs mm. now so at that stage of your, this type of presentation why wouldn't you include that or do you think that's going too far in the whistle stop <laughs> well david you caught me out i forgot to include it actually all right okay <laughs> so let me let me tell you my bit on that so any herbs spices lemon garlic ginger chili pepper all fine it's just salt that we should be yeah. careful with yeah and for you know there may be many on this uh on this zoom who understand what spices and herbs can do and it's a very british british like a white british thing if you will excuse me from saying that mm. uh, to because of the way in which someone like me was brought up that i didn't have much clue about spices and made minimal about herbs as i was growing up and it was only thanks to my wife uh coming from another continent that showed me how that can work so i think it's it's as important as saying to people it's so easy to cut out sugar from tea um mm. you know once once you do it everything's a smooth road but anyway uh, glad that uh, i was able to mention that and the other thing that was surprising um was that where you showed the fruits uh, that were on the lower side I was quite surprised about seeing bananas I think they were on the high side bananas would be on the high side you know yeah but I thought that plate was showing the fruits that were less less high. oh I see what you mean sorry I that I just got a generic yeah um, I just got a generic okay um eat well plate um picture not everyone needs to restrict potassium though so some people can include bananas you know yeah. so it's only if you are on a potassium restriction that you can't have bananas plenty yeah. of plenty of kidney patients eat bananas and are perfectly fine so it, they yeah. it's not they should yeah they, they were okay to be there well one of the pleasures of having had a transplant yeah. for instance tonight at five o'clock i had a banana yeah. So, but I'm sorry for those of you that don't think it's right to have a banana. What I, the last point I want to make is that it's fantastic to hear Emily talking in the way in which she is about certain fruit fruits foods that going back to when I was a young a younger man, which is you know uh, delving into history. Um, we were told originally when we were going on to dialysis such severe ways of handling food and you're much luckier now 
that dietitians are able to talk to you in a totally different way and help you. And if any of you have problems, I would really recommend that you try and see Emily or colleagues to help you out because it's really so helpful. Um, okay, uh, here's a question uh, from initials TD. I've had a transplant. Should I still be aware of consuming reduced salt? I'm using garlic powder. Yeah, that is a brilliant um, alternative to salt. And the answer is yes, in, because it's not just not just people that have had kidney problems, actually, salt causes damage for everybody. So being careful with salt is good for everybody. So to keep your transplanted kidney as good as possible, definitely keep on doing what you're doing. Great. Uh, Tony, I've only just seen your name now. Are there any other things you'd like to ask, Emily? You're on mute. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. sorry. Um, I mean, I do try and um, stick to the diet, stick to a low diet, but I do find it um, difficult sometimes because uh, obviously you go out for dinner and the restaurant, they always put salt in everything. And even though you ask them to uh, not put salt, they get quite offended sometimes because they've already, they've already marinated stuff and made stuff in advance. Um, is that an issue? Is that a problem? I mean, look, you, you're careful with salt where you can be. So, you know, if you're, if you, it's, it's about the overall picture, not about one meal. So look, have the meal, enjoy it. Um, but then when you're doing your cooking, that's where you can cut back and you can be careful then. So just, it's about the overall picture, not any one, one meal. So yeah, don't worry about thank it. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Etty, uh, would you like to answer the, ask this question directly or do you want me to do it? Okay, I couldn't hear you, but I think that sign was. I, uh, well, uh, I wasn't going to ask a question as such, but I, I, I think what I wrote there is that I actually use uh, turmeric and cumin in my cooking. Um, I, I'm a lower, lower uh, clearance patient and when I first met the nurse I actually got loads of leaflets because I've got plenty of information uh, and Emily what you, you were talking about really amazing you, you did bring some new things to me but I have to say that I knew most of it and, uh, um, and I, find, I find that I cope really well with not having this, not having that. And people actually say, well, you can't eat this. I miss a lot of things, but I know that it's like um, aubergine and courgettes. I used to love these things, but I don't touch them. I used to love soups and I thought that I couldn't have. And they said, no, as long as you boil the vegetables, which is really great. So I am being very, very careful. I've been uh, <clears throat> sort of what my... Um, Kidney function has been 15 for quite a few months, um, but my nephrologist is really quite pleased because obviously I'm doing the right things. So I'm trying to keep dialysis for as long as possible, and but I hope it's still going to be away. You know? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. and to be able to keep your kidney function at that level, and mm -hmm. you know, your potassium and everything safe, mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah, obviously yeah. doing the right things. So. Yeah. I'm getting uh, several um, uh, tablets to control the, the phosphate, but with the potassium, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I, I keep really, I'm very, being very, very careful because I really want to delay the, the <laughs> dialysis for as long as possible. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and uh, about the bananas, actually, not only are they very high in potassium, but they're very high in sugar because I have diabetes type two, um, and I went on a um, on a, a day seminar, which they actually told us that having a banana is like having thirteen teaspoons of sugar. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't touched bananas since twenty seventeen. Yeah. Wow, brilliant. <laughs> I don't miss it. I don't miss it, but but 
it really is not only full of potassium but full of sugar as well yeah so, that's absolutely right yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Thank you. and also I, I did get all the leaflets you know so i have them in front of me and if i forget anything then i consult my sheets yeah. <laughs> brilliant yeah a lot of people yeah. have them pinned up on their fridges actually yeah absolutely yeah and thanks for that talk really great thank you oh my pleasure well well done Emily. You, uh, so hang on lou uh you gotta wait your turn so oh, you put your hand okay. up because we've got I a few, few people before you but i just wanted to say etty it sounds like you're doing great and i hope you stave off dialysis for as long as possible uh good luck to you on that um Hele, if I pr pronounced your name right, do you want to ask your question? Or I can't see you. Uh, I can't see you on the screen. Hele, are you there? There we are. You're on mute. Do you want me to ask the question for you? Okay, I can't see a response. So Hele says, recently de these days. My feet have been swelling up lots. Before it wasn't this bad. How can my diet help that? Okay, so I mean, there's a couple of things that need to happen there. Um, salt reduction is the first thing, but also that's in con conjunction with taking water tablets to help get rid of the extra fluid. So um you need to speak to your doctor about that really and then they can get you on the right right dosage of medication sometimes people might need to um have a bit of a higher day, dose for a time you know in the hotter weather tend, people tend to get away with a bit having a bit more fluids and stuff but um the, the the medical team need to sort of guide on that on which medications are right but diet wise it's just salt having less salt okay thank you um kim if you want to ask the question you can uh or if you don't want you want me to do it yeah you're go on, on mute on. you're on mute kim no, okay uh yeah i've unmuted now but it's uh so the question i've got um, yeah. is one uh, sorry about my ignorance but i don't know what low clearance is Okay, so it's just literally, um, so if you know your EGFR, which is a measure of your kidney function. Yeah. So if it's less than between 20 and 30 and you have comorbidities such as um, um, diabetes, then you would be, you would be tr referred to the low clearance clinic. Um, and if it's less than 20 without any other things, then you'd be in what's called low clearance. So literally, it just means that your kidneys are clearing at a low level. Okay, and the other thing is, um, I've just been, uh, my genetic notes wants me to go on Rapprin, Perul. Rapprin, yeah, yeah. And um, she said it's got no side effects at all, except maybe you might cough at night, but you're saying mm -hmm. that um, it hires potassium. Can do, yeah. Yeah. So if that happens, um, then, you know, I mean, it, tend to see that when people are have a much lower kidney function, so probably less than 30, definitely less than 30. I'd be surprised if you have a better kidney function than um, an EGFR more than 30. It shouldn't be a problem, but um, it, it does um, affect it if your kidney function is lower. Right. OK. And last thing is sugar. I mean, I know that um, generally, anyway, most people shouldn't have so much sugar. But in terms of kidneys, what's the take on it for sugar? Same as anything else, really. Sugar doesn't damage your kidneys, but, you know, diabetes does. So, you know, if you have diabetes, then obviously having lots of sugar is not going to help with that. So, you know, it, it's not it's not directly um, correlated to your kidneys, but for your health in general, really. And what is considered a healthy amount of sugar per day? <laughs> now you're testing me. Um, I can't <laughs> remember. I can't remember what the government guidelines are. You can Google it. You can Google it. Google. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, 
Kim, by the way, I take Ramapril. And yeah. uh, the only thing I think it affected was uh, before I started taking it, I had a full head of hair. Do you reckon that's what caused it? I'm <laughs> joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brother Lou. Tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brother Louis. definitely doesn't have hair loss. It's, <laughs> it's been else. such a long time. I forgot what I was going to ask, but it's just a quick one. Um, Emily, yeah, um, dietitian, do they do they cater for transplant patients or they? Do we not? do have a transplant clinic. Yeah, so it's um, based at the Royal Free on okay. um, Mondays. I think they're just once a month. So the wait for that clinic is quite a time. But I mean, if it's something massively urgent, we can get people seen elsewhere, but otherwise we do have a clinic. Okay, yes. and it's the same format, the same number, the same, just go through the dietitians and... Absolutely, go okay. through your transplant. So I think it's Emma, if Emma's your transplant nurse at the Royal Free, then just okay. ask her to no, refer. No, just thought I'd ask that question because it seems to be um, yeah. top of the, yeah. All right, thank you, you could go now. Have. <laughs> you can go, Lewis. Uh, uh, right, here's a question from Chris Riocco. Um, and I'll, I'll say this because it's simple. Please, can I ask if microwaving frozen vegetables is okay? So, yeah, yeah. Microwaving frozen vegetables is absolutely fine, yeah um yeah, it's no problem with that if you if you if you have to be really super duper careful with potassium then i might say boil them but generally um, um microwaving them is totally fine sorry can i just put in because that was me asking the question it's actually for my father yeah. who's um low clearance i'm here with my yeah. mum um we're seeing dr wilson next tuesday um uh -huh. so the thing i do because you, you did uh, about the puffiness um yeah he was drinking two and a quarter liters because that's what he was advised of water a day and then down to two liters uh, but he had about a stone of water retention yeah so um what's your gauge for water intake so that needs to be that we wouldn't comment on that that needs to be directed by the doctor yeah so i mean they will tell you a uh, fluid restriction based on what they're giving you as a diuretic as the water mm -hmm. tablet so yeah. yeah so that's not we weren't involved in that in, in, pre, okay. in pre dialysis okay once people are on dialysis we can we can give advice but um pre dialysis because everybody's kidney function is completely different you sure. know he's got an egfr of or last three months ago it was 17 so he's having bloods tomorrow so we'll know what it is tomorrow but yeah tuesday but so uh, get the, you were saying about the boiling i just thought very often we microwave um frozen veg so is that as good so. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, I would really only think of that in terms of um, potassium. So we boil the vegetables to leach out the potassium and throw the water away. Yeah. Um, frozen vegetables tend to not be particularly high in potassium anyway. So. OK. OK, that's good to know. Yeah. And microwaving. Yeah, it's perfectly acceptable. I microwave mine. Yeah. OK, thank you. First, can I also just say but thank you both very much. David, you've been great. And Emily, fantastic. So oh, I get to actually meet you one day. So yeah, that would be thank great. You. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank the, you. The check's in the post. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, your, your check's in the post. Anyway. Uh, OK, here's one from Colleen. Do you want to talk, Colleen? Yes. Um... Yes, I just wondered what are the real and true differences between table salt, Celtic salt, Himalayan salt? Are any of those better than the other? So the, the short answer is no. They are, it's the, this, the actual sodium part of the sodium chloride, which is salt that causes the damage. And also all salt is made of sodium chloride. So no matter what other minerals it's got in it, if it's pink Himalayan, you know, beautiful most expensive salt in the world it ultimately um has the same effect and causes the same damage so yeah unfortunately not okay so put your himalayan salt away <laughs> Colleen. Colleen. um okay i think those are all the questions uh, patricia you did put a hand up before do you still want to ask your question yes i do actually thank Go you for the lovely talk. I just 
noticed that you were mainly focusing on patients who do hemo. So my mm -hmm. question is, how do you monitor patients on PD? So we do run PD clinics. We have PD clinics um, for the Royal Free and for Edgeware. Um, so that's, that's how we do. We do have dietetic clinics for both of those sites. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to see, if you're on PD and you want to see a dietitian, let, um, you know, let your PD doctor or nurse know and they can just get you referred into us. It's fine. No, I had my transplant, my second transplant. Oh, oh. oh. fantastic. I Good. for PD patients and I will always stand up for them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Do you know why it is? It's because I don't actually cover PD clinics myself. So in my mind, I'm not quite there. But we have, yeah, we've got um, three dietitians that do cover all of the PD clinics as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Patricia. Jill, unmute. Is that it? Yes. Um, thank you for the talk. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, I'm asking on behalf of somebody else. I've got to have a transplant myself, but I thought the um, charts that you showed on the various different vegetables, I can't remember them on the potassium and actual pictures of food. Are they in leaflet form anywhere for people to see? Because they're, we, they're quite quick. You went quite quickly through. And yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, what I can do is email um, them to David and um, you're welcome to, to share them out if you want to. But but just bearing in mind that not everyone needs to follow a potassium restriction. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're if the person who you're here on behalf of, um, you know, or and you would like to speak to a dietitian, we can arrange a telephone consultation. Um, if you wanted to yeah to no, it's just it's just a general information not only for the this other person but this person's um is going to probably see your presentation anyway um through a link but um right. for me anyway i would be interested mm -hmm. to see it for me anyway yeah so what i tend to try and avoid is giving out that sort of information generically because then what happens is um, some people will go away and then start following a low potassium diet when yeah. they ne never needed to in the first place. So they might be restricting fruits and vegetables, actually the very things that would be better for them to be having. Okay. So, okay. so that's the sort of rationale between, no, but behind no. it not being sort of blanketly given out. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's fair. But, but I will email it to David. So if you're curious and then, yeah. um, would that be okay, David? Yeah, no problem. And uh, uh, the point that Emily's made there, I'm going to stress again, it makes such a difference to be able to get a personal, uh, a personal advice from a dietitian, uh, because that point about looking at generic information can make some people that uh, take it very seriously um, being careful about foods it can make them make some wrong decisions so uh, sorry to harp on about that uh, Carol you've got a question I believe um, no it's not a question I wanted to say thank you to Emily for what she's been saying it's been wonderful but um, David has recorded your talk and we will put it up on our website with the slides because you actually said when you were talking that this is generic and you have to be looking at your blood tests and talking to your doctors so is that okay with you if the slides and the talk go up together yeah that's absolutely fine I'd be very happy yes of course yes yeah, so for the rest of you it will be up next week on our website so you'll be able to find it there and look at it great Carol uh we if, as you uh, uh look after the uh, production of what ends up on the website it would be great if on those appropriate slides we can put a panel uh, relating to this is generic information 
Yeah. Well, we, we can put that at the start is probably the best place to put that, that well, this, this okay. is generic information and you need to consult your doctor and follow your blood tests. Because obviously, if you haven't got a potassium problem, you haven't got a potassium problem. But if you have, it can be quite debilitating. Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Ni, nee, you uh, unmute. Yeah, uh, thank you, Emily, for a very interesting uh, talk. Um, you covered most of the things, but to the African group uh, who love uh, the ayam and uh, plantain, uh, are these uh, good for them? Hi, Nai. Yeah, I mean, yams and plantain, um, um come under you know um yam would come under your um starchy carbohydrates so yeah boiling them brilliant if someone has a high potassium then it's but yeah um plantain is very high in potassium so people do need to be a bit careful of that but how people tend to get around it is they might just have a little bit you know so for example a banana has got twice the amount of potassium as an apple so if you just have half a banana then it's the equivalent of an apple so there are ways to manage that if that's really particularly something that people love to have and how about uh, okra okra woo, well, if you've got high potassium go easy but um if you haven't enjoy <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> okay, Nee, thank you. Last, this is going to be the last question. I don't know what your name is, sir, but you are iPhone and you had headphones on. Uh, I've been asking you to unmute. Do you want to go ahead with your question? It's good. What's good? Yeah. Oh. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. I want just to ask a question that uh, this uh, coconut oil, water, and milk, is it uh, good for sick and depression? Hi there, hi. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> if someone's got high potassium, I would say avoid that. Um, if, if potassium's fine, then you can include some of that. So potassium, uh, sorry, uh, coconut milk, almond milk, oat milk, those things can be quite, you know, people enjoy having them in the diet. So it does, it does depend on whether you're following a potassium restriction or not. If you are, then coconut milk would not be a good one. Yeah. So if uh, fried fish and boiled fish, which one would be good for a renal patient? Coconut water. No. So now, am I asking your question, answering your question? Yeah. Um, so, well, you know what? If you want to lose weight, I wouldn't recommend having fried fish. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> depends. Some fried fish now and again, absolutely fine. Um, and boiling it, I mean, it, yeah, it makes no difference really. It depends on what your, I suppose, what your weight and health, healthy eating goals are with that. Thank you. Well, you failed miserably on that one, didn't you, Nee? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you can't, to me, here at home, um, you know, I, I was brought up on fish and chips because my father had fish and chip shops. Right? Um, but these days we have occasionally, if we have fried fish, and this is speaking as a transplant patient we do it what's called spanish style so it's very lightly fried and uh, half a dozen chips g gives you the same uh, f values of pleasure as a whole plate of chips believe me uh, if you can get used to it so that is a way of uh, uh, keeping the calories down but anyway there we are Mr. Can I, can I I just, sorry can i just ask what's what's wrong with aubergine and, and uh courgette somebody said they um avoid them like the plague so um i think if when it when it comes to a specific diet just i think you, it's best to speak to someone specifically about that 
I mean, aubergine isn't a particularly high potassium vegetable. Um, so we, I don't generally um, recommend, you know, you have to avoid aubergine, but um, so, I mean, I wasn't going to comment at that point, really. Okay, of course, yeah, mainly water, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they're not massively high in potassium. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but we do have a good list of low, medium and high potassium fruits and vegetables, actually, which oh, I will also give to David, which um, is actually very, very useful. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Great. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. That was a really interesting Q&A session. Emily, we're really grateful because that was a really enjoyable, interesting talk. You've been great with all the, the Q&A stuff. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. And I'm going to leave now. Thank, thanks, thank you, for, Emily. All right, that's a, that you're getting, if you'll excuse the expression, you're getting the silent clap. Yay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks, thank everybody. Thank you very much, bye -bye. Emily. Thank you. Bye.